The spending has begun. This week marks the first votes that members of JFAC will take to set the new budget. Though the committee is off to a relatively slow start, the decisions they made this week will govern the remainder of the budget-making process. It will also provide some insight into whether the committee will stand in the face of big spending or if it will be more of the same of what was seen in prior years. Starting with statewide budget decisions, we find that these decisions are critical for determining what would cost the state of Idaho to continue to maintain their current operations. These standard calculations are run for all 108 budgets, then agreed to in one motion for consistency and expediency. These decisions are generally included as uh, changes in state employee compensation, benefits, movement of monies between agencies for services like human resources, inflationary adjustments, and replacement items. Though there are, was some debate over the efficacy of raising the pay of state employees by 4% or by $1.20, and whether it was a better decision to consolidate the Human Resources Department or leave it the same, any cost savings were awash between the two programs. These decisions boil down to a key issue at hand, though. The cost to run government is approximately $1.6 billion more expensive than it was two years ago. That is 16% growth and faster than inflation over the same period. Idahoans should be concerned because these spending increases in the maintenance budget are the result of growth in ongoing funding that gets built into government over time. However, this is largely ignored as JFAC considers the budgets before them each year. One prime example of how careless spending gets integrated into the budget can be found in this year's supplemental spending on public schools. This week, JFAC considered a $1.5 million supplemental for dyslexia training for teachers. The story starts with the passage of House Bill 731 last year. The legislation required dyslexia to be a focus of professional development programs. The fiscal note for that bill said the whole policy would only cost $97,000 due to the need to hire an administrator for the program. However, the fiscal note failed to mention the $1.5 million needed to train teachers, nor the additional $420,000 in travel and cost to procure a diagnostic tool. Though costs are expected to go down once the program is implemented, they will not go down by much. Teachers will still have ongoing training to do, travel costs will remain, and software licenses for the diagnostic tool will be a recurring expense. Conservatives saw this as a dishonest proposal, given that none of these costs were disclosed to the legislature when the bill was passed. Unfortunately, only Representatives Josh Tanner and Senator Scott Herndon voted against this bad budgeting practice. In the meantime, the legislation will cost more than $2.3 million this year and have an ongoing impact on the general fund. But what does this mean to Idahoans? Many of these ongoing impacts are covered by the general, dedicated, or federal funds. When we say that a budget has a negative impact on the general fund, we are talking about how it impacts the revenues collected from Idaho taxpayers. Keep in mind that the three largest contributors to the general fund are sales taxes, income taxes, and business taxes. These taxes make it harder to collect a paycheck, spend your money, and run a business. Spending from the general fund means that shortfalls in the budget would either require cuts to government services or a rise in taxes. This means that every additional dollar that the state spends from the general fund is another dollar in your pocket that becomes collateral if the state can no longer support its programs. With all of the focus on general funds, this leaves lots of room for budget games in the state budget to make ends meet. For instance, dedicated funds are monies that are earmarked for accounts and programs created by new legislation. These have permanent impacts on the state budget and taxes because they are mostly sourced from general fund revenues and cannot be removed without legislative action. Federal funds also take a toll, as many of these funds are recouped either by higher taxes or stolen from you through the price of inflation. As we wrap up this first week of spending decisions in JFAC, we find that government is only getting more expensive and lawmakers are failing to see how its expansion is impacting Idahoans. As new programs and spending continue to roll in, it is critical for lawmakers and JFAC to put a stop to it. 
The prosperity of families throughout the gem state depends on conservatives to win on budget issues. For more information on IFF's issues, budget analyses, and articles, please visit idahofreedom.org.